Hey folks, Mike Massey down here, RJ Power, rjpower.com, RJ Power Seagville, and Longview locations. I want to talk to you a little bit about tractor maintenance, money saving tips, and ease of your time and money with your tractor. Um, we, did a, we did a video uh, last week on trailer maintenance. This is the sequel tractor. So, the number one thing I want to stress before anything, when you're walking up to your machine to use it, whether you're parked in the barn, you're parked under in grass, you're parked uh, wherever you're at, before you ever touch anything, you want to look underneath your tractor. You want to look for any wet spots that are lying on the ground. If you have problems, the ground will show it. Um, very important part. Very. Um, also, if you are a tractor owner or even a, mo a mower owner, even a trailer owner, it is a very wise decision to invest in a grease gun. Um, this loader right here with loader and bucket, uh, this right here is the most overused, underrated piece of the tractor. This thing is constantly moving. Even if you're not doing loader work, it is constantly moving. They have grease certs that are in-housed on bad boys. Some other brands do too. Um, but what this allows for you to do is to detach from the grease cert with your grease gun with no problems, no snapping of your grease certs. And also if you're going up against uh, brushy areas, you're not gonna have grease certs bust off and get into a limb or what have you. Um, so imperative, you want to hit your grease certs at all times. Now, for the Tractor manufacturers that don't have in-house side mount research, they will have them in a very peculiar spot every time. Um, there's old saying, out of sight, out of mind. Um, if you cannot see your grease certs on the side of the loader, that means they are on the end of your rod. Don't forget about them just because you can't see them. Um, very, very vital part of the machine. Um, the next part I want to talk to you about is your fuel and storage of your fuel. Um, obviously, you want to make sure that you are using diesel, not gas. This does not take death. You do not have to worry about diesel exhaust fluid until you hit 95 horse and up. Um, this does take diesel. You can use off-road diesel, on-road diesel, makes no difference. It will run on either. Um, the next point of maintenance would be your oil stick and uh, your oil dipstick and also your oil filters and all your various filters that you're going to have. You're going to consist of three on this tractor. You're going to have your engine oil filter here. Your engine oil fill cap is here. And right back here with this little yellow hook is your dipstick or the engine oil. Right here above this you will see your fuel filter, just so. And then in the same area right here is going to be your hydraulic filter. Most of the time on the newer tractors they will be placed accordingly. Sometimes you will have your hydraulic filter on the other side. Sometimes you have two hydraulic filters. Sometimes you have multiple filters for bigger tractors. Um, this one here is a smaller 35 horse. This will have one hydraulic filter. Um, your maintenance for when you're using. So when you're brush hogging, mowing, you're kicking up tons and tons of blades of grass, dry grass, fresh grass, dust, dirt, sand, you name it. It's kicking up from the air movement of the tractor, the vibrations, and also the implement or whatever you're doing is kicking it up. When you're talking about that, you have to keep this machine cool. And part of that is your filters and screens protecting your radiators and hydraulic filters. Right here is your screen that covers your radiator. It will always be made out of metal. However, it will 
when you're brush hogging, have a complete covering of grass that will block airflow to your radiator. Like, oh, Mike, man, I'm out here brush hogging and uh, my AC's quit working. Okay, is it not working or is it not blowing as hard? If it's not blowing as hard or as cool, it's clogged up, for sure. Um, if your machine starts overheating or losing power, you're working it, make sure you keep it clean. Um, sometimes, good idea to do it while you're brush hauling. Um, just take a stop, stop under the trachet tree, do it real quick, get back in, now. Um, and then the next point of reference for this one. So, the EPA has made laws that protect the environment from black soot. Anything over 26 horsepower has a diesel particulate filter or diesel exhaust fluid. Tractors up to 95 horse take a diesel particulate filter. This is the uh, Catch-22 with the tractor, so to speak, is what they call the regen process. If you use this tractor, it is a three-cylinder inline engine, diesel engine. If you use this tractor at idle, do not idle it how it comes factory at idle. You want to use it at idle between 150 and 200 RPMs. That right there will cause the engine to burn the particulate matter out of the the DPF system. It will have enough heat generated at those RPMs that it will take care of your suit for you. And they say when you go up to your PTO speeds, you're obviously burning the suit out, so you will never have to worry about that. Um, this does take uh, windshield wiper fluid with your cabs. Some of them will, some of them won't. Um, obviously, your coolant, you want to always make sure that all your levels are checked up. You always want to make sure that your engine oil is up to par before you use it. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about as far as maintenance on this machine is back here at your rear differential. You will have a dipstick back here. On the bad boys, you will have a dipstick and you will also have a fill hole. This is your dipstick. We can see it has fluid on it. And then this right here is your fill. You always want to make sure <laughs> that this is filled up. You always want to make sure that it is up to spec as far as fluids. And again, when you go to use your machine, you want to make sure that you are looking before you start using at the ground for wet spots. You listen folks, this this is something this is Tractors are not cheap. Tractors are a lot of money. And in order to protect your money, you have to take care of your equipment. Or else it won't last five years. Um, I don't know about you, but I would like to spend 20, 30, 40, 50,000 once. If I got to do it twice before my kids are out of high school, we have issues. Um, and, and part of that is the manufacturers with their equipment. But the most important part is the operator and the end user doing their maintenance and making sure that their equipment is clean and always up to par and greased all the way to the T. Um, that right there is not only going to make you more productive, but it's also going to make your money have a longevity. Um, and it's just good practice, period, whether it's a tractor, trailer, car, truck, go-kart be anything. If you spend the money on it, make sure you take care of your money. Again, this is Mike Massey down here at RJ Power. We got your power up!